Google is always trying to deliver the best results. And you could have a new piece of content that if you've SEOed well and you really understand your um, market, and also in this case, we saw that there wasn't, there was some in Alberta in that, but depending on where you're from, you may be the only piece of content that's in your area. And Google will go, finally, we have something from the East Coast. We can start serving that to users who are asking for this closer to where you're located or in the, or the West Coast, right? But in order for that to happen, we have to remember about performing SEO checklist. Now, this isn't an SEO talk completely, but if you do all that work without formatting it in a way that the little spiders that are crawling around the internet, they're gonna have a tough time. And I, and I see a lot of work put into content that's not SEO correctly. And the people go, I guess our SEO was broke. It's like, well, well, no, you need to format it a certain way. And it takes time, it takes months for something to turn on to analytics or to Google's radar and to actually start going, this content about the watershed restoration, is this about how to make a watershed restoration or is this questions before? And is it Canadian or American? And does it give money or does it take money? Are people in a situation where they want this right now or are they only in a, in a, in a finding out phase? All of these questions are being asked with SEO, but if you have it formatted a certain way, that makes these little bots crawl through your stuff a lot faster and they'll understand what you're trying to achieve. And that's what speeds up SEO results. So in that, there are lots of things to do with SEO, a lot. And there's lots of great other resources out there for SEO top to bottom and all that stuff. I have given you a check sheet, uh, a checklist, and I would say one of the most critical components to think about is you need to have headings in your content. Often I see fantastic content written, but like the headings aren't actually heading one, two, three, four, which like the bots need, right? What I often see is someone just bolds it or they change the font size and color, but the actual syntax of those headings aren't H2 or H3. It's sort of like having a, a book and you want to turn to the table of contents to kind of cross-reference. Is this actually one, I, is this book that's about cooking duck? Is it actually about cooking ducks or is it about ducks cooking? So you can go through your table of contents and go, oh, it's going to cover seasoning duck. It'll cover the tools I need to use. It'll cover the kinds of duck that you can and can't, you know, cook. I'm getting really morbid here. I own birds for pets and I'm getting a little willied out here myself. I'm just off with the whole, the whole duck thing. But you want to think about that. And you also want to think about you need to have links on your content that links to other pages in your website and other posts because those crawlers, they need to understand when they land on a page, they need context. We're really smart now with SEO. Those spiders need to understand, well, I came on this page about adopting an animal. Is this whole website about adopting animals and the welfare of animal good? Or is this just some person's concept of what adopting an animal is all about? And the other thing you want to create that's critical for SEO is you've got to put, you've got to encourage other websites to link to your content. And that's a big one. It's not something you can do overnight. It's called backlinking. And backlinking is critical because you can write 100,000 amazing articles about the welfare of animals. But if you don't have any other websites about the welfare of animals talking about you, you don't have any other websites that are of anything at all that ever mention your website then the crawlers have no idea to vouch you. So it's kind of about a, a, a question of clout with that backlinks. So SEO, important. Once you get that piece of content written and you put it on your website, you wanna work on chipping through this checklist. You don't have to do it all in one shot, but every time you nab one of these, you're upping your chances for that. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot. What I always tell people is it's kind of like if you had to like write down a piece of paper, how to drive a car and you were like, approach car, touch the door, touch the handle, get out key, open door, put your butt on the seat, close the door. Blah, blah, blah. It can seem really overwhelming. By the time you do three or four posts or pages, and I'm sure that Ben and others that are doing digital, they can all like, they're all nodding their head. This becomes second row to you. Like it looks like a lot now, but it, it's like formatting. It's like knowing when to put a period and when to put exclamation marks in your work. So. That's great, that's fantastic, but a lot of people stop there. And that's okay, but we can do better. And Actually, reason... I've got one more question coming at us real fast from Lauren. What if you're in a position where a lot of the content that you publish, and I face this with different sites that I run, a lot of the content you publish does not fit into the SEO loving structure of heading, headings and 
listicles, et cetera. So I'm thinking, for example, if you're a nonprofit that wants to share a bunch of personal stories from, let's say, the children you're helping, yeah. writing one of those posts, a blog post, you know, update on Stephen's story. You're mm -hmm. going to pull the heart out of it if you do like heading, like, you know, number one was born, number two, yeah, you know, growth and stuff. So a lot of your content ends up being very difficult to write in an SEO structured way. What's your right. advice for organizations that face that challenge sure. to oh, still on. get the traffic? <laughs> right. So the first thing is we got to be honest. SEO is about organic search. So SEO is about answering people's questions. So SEO is not the only way you get traffic, but the first question is, is this content someone who's going to wake up one morning and go, oh, I really wish I knew the story of Bobby in Vancouver. Probably not, but what might they search? They might be interested in, of course, doing that research. And when you're typing things into Google, you might want to have a page that is about like success stories of working with Wigco. Let's just say it's a, you're a nonprofit that makes wigs for, for children, right? So you're thinking now that that content could stay where it is. It doesn't have to be SEO'd per se, because people aren't necessarily searching that. Like they're more like people on SEO are trying to answer a question, solve a problem, or find out more information. But that's not to say that you might want to make one dedicated page that let's say that the end goal for you is to get people to sign up for your newsletter to become volunteers for your wig making you might want to create a page where you have multiples of those stories and you could have the heading one could be success stories of children wearing handmade wigs for cancer i, I did a really awful job I'm not, a, I'm not a copywriter folks so when i'm doing this on the fly that could be your heading one heading two could be since 2013 we have been helping children with cancer look better Again, and I, I, if anyone in this room, I'm doing this injustice. I do apologize. I'm coming to my edges on the, on what I what I find is appropriate. And then you could have heading three it could be Eli's story, and you could have a little bit of text there. Next heading three, Samantha's story, a little bit of text there. The next one would be Jonathan's story, heading heading four. And next to that story would be a picture of them, and that picture's image would say Allison dash wig dash co dash story, and the alt tag would say you know, a three, three-year-old Allison wearing a blonde wig made by the Wigco organization. So do you see what I'm doing there is that not all of your content can be SEO'd, but if it's going to be under 300 words, you might not, shouldn't be all by itself. You might want to actually think from a user's perspective of combining three or four or 50 or 10 of those, those stories onto one page and then have that page flow into some sort of story mode. SEO was about people trying to find something. Websites, like the thing about SEO is not every one of your pages are gonna rank. It's more about, again, doing your historical research to figure out like what do people already find that SEO is sending traffic to your, or like Google and Bing are sending traffic to. And the next part is moving forward, we have something in mind we wanna do, Allison, we wanna, we wanna increase our donor list or we wanna get more volunteers. Then you would create content that would be SEO for volunteers, especially if you did the work and got, oh, people are actually looking on how to volunteer for organization. We don't even have a dang volunteer page. Whoops, probably fix that.